Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Maker MK34. All right, here we are with the two versions of the Maker MK34. We've got the cool white one. We've got the high CRI. Maker is a relatively new brand for us. We've only had them for a couple months as of the time of this video, and this is the first video that I've done on them. But we've been really impressed with what they've sent us so far. Great quality on them, solid interfaces, nice features, and really attractive price points. I've shown a lot of the high lumen, compact soda can size lights recently, and this is one of my favorites, and one of the big reasons is that they have it available in high CRI. So you've got 8,000 lumens on max output on the cool white, 6,500 on the high CRI, so there is a trade-off in the lumens for sure, but man, the tint is awesome. If you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a big fan of the, the neutral white and the high CRI, and this is a great example of that. If you want the max output that you can get, if you don't like that neutral tint, that kind of incandescent tint, you want the cool white, you still have that option. So it's nice to see that they have both instead of uh, just the cool white like most manufacturers do. So, like I said, I've been really pleased with this light so far. I've actually been using this on my nightly walks with my kids for the most part, and uh, I've been really happy with the way it performs. Let me actually talk about some information on here. So like I said, 8,000 lumens on the, high, or on the uh, cool white, two meters, so pretty much IPX8 uh, of the uh, water resistance and dust resistance. You got 280 meters of beam distance on the cool white, and then 1.5 meters of impact rating. And we'll talk about some more specs here in just a little bit, but let me open this up and show you what you get on the inside. So same exact packaging on the high CRI. I just went ahead and took it out and it's got batteries in it. User manual, definitely worth the read. We're gonna show that more in just a little bit. Here is the light itself. We're gonna pull that out. So there's the light. And then you have a couple of accessories. You have a lanyard and you have a spare O-ring if you're a lanyard person or if you happen to need a spare O-ring if you shred it for any reason. I've never done that myself but uh, we've gotten lights back from you guys that we've had to replace them on. So I know people do it for sure. I can get that precariously balanced. All right, there you go. All right, so let's take a look at the user manual because it does have a lot of these specs in here. So we'll zoom in just so you can or hold it closer. Now nah, we'll zoom in. So we'll zoom in just so you can see that a little bit better uh, of the specs of what we've got going on here. So you've got 0.1 to 30 lumens on the lowest output. Hey, let's go for the English version. <laughs> All right, there uh, there we go. So 0.1 lumens to 30 lumens on moonlight. And what that means is that you can actually adjust the moonlight output, which is really cool. I'm gonna show you that better here in a little bit. And you've got uh, two months to five days, depending on which level it's at. 120 lumens for five hours, 500 lumens for 7.5 hours, 1,000 lumens for 3.5 hours, 2,500 lumens for two hours, and then 8,000 lumens on the turbo and strobe, and they don't have run times on those. And the reason is, just like pretty much every other light we sell, especially the high lumen ones, they're gonna drop after a little while. Uh, they're automatically gonna drop in output just because of heat. You don't want the light getting too hot. You don't want your hand getting too hot. It's gonna damage the light. You don't want it to damage your hand. So it has automatic protection built in where it's gonna take care of that and protect you in the light. So think of the turbos as kind of burst outputs where you can use them for a few minutes, look around and see what's going on out there. And then you can go down to the lower outputs, which you still get fantastic output and you get great run times like on that 2500 lumen one. And uh, so 20,000 candela, you got the 280 meters and then the 1.5 meters and the IPX8. So the IPX8 basically means that you can put it under water or you can have it out in the rain and it will be fine. You're not gonna have any water getting in there. Uh, and most of them are rated for about 30 minutes, so you can do that for a little while. Just don't go diving with it. So anything short of diving with most of the lights we sell, and you are good to go. The batteries on this, it takes three 18650 batteries. It needs three high-drain 18650 batteries, and they recommend unprotected. So what does that mean? That basically means you need some IMR batteries, and the only ones that we currently sell that will fit in this light and power it are these Sanyo. So these are Sanyo NCR 18650GAs. Uh, we have a bundle available on the site and we have them in the description of the light saying which batteries to get and I'll put it down in the description as well. But this battery tube is super, super short. So keep that in mind. 
Uh, you're not going to be able to fit a lot of batteries in here. Definitely, definitely if they have thick wrappers or if they have protection circuits or anything like that, or large button tops, they will not fit in this light. So these are the only ones that we currently have in stock that uh, will fit in this light, but they're really high quality batteries. They have great capacity. They can deliver a super high current and uh, they're high quality. So, you know, only one battery that we currently have in stock, but they're good batteries. So it's a good choice. So these are the batteries. They've got flat tops, but it's raised enough where it makes contact on the inside. You can also put a small little rare earth magnet or a little blob of solder just to make better contact in there if you want to do that. Let's turn the light around just so you can see the machining on it. You got some nice additional heat sinking surface area on there. You've got a tripod mount, which I find super, super useful. We have a lot of photographers that'll buy lights like this. We've been doing a lot of business with the movie guys that are now in Atlanta in droves. And they like lights like this a lot because you can put them on a tripod and not have to worry about handing, handling it or having it on a, uh, you know, balancing it on a bag or a tree or anything like that. You can put it on a tripod and then position it exactly how you want. Whole bunch of LEDs down in there. So you've got 12 LEDs all with their own separate little optics. Got stainless steel bezels around each of the optics. Help protect it and keep those in place. Keep them nice and secure. Pretty cool machining. I like the color on it. I like the gray. You know, most lights that we have are black, so it's nice to see the grays and the greens and the tans that some of the manufacturers are doing. Nice switch on the side that's raised up enough to be able to find it, but not raised up so much that it's going to be accidentally activated super easily. It's got a nice feel to it, got that nice soft rubber, and there's an LED underneath that has uh, some battery life indication. And you've got some knurling down here just to help give it some extra grip. Let's open it up and show you the inside. So here's the inside of the battery tube. A couple of nice things to note is that there is not a separate battery carrier. So the battery uh, carrier is actually integrated into the battery tube. So you don't have to worry about losing or breaking a separate piece. It's all integrated in there. So you can see you've got the springs down in there. It's all integrated in there. You don't have to worry about a battery carrier. And then here are the contact points there on the top. So you can see that because it's got sort of reverse polarity protection, you got this plastic ring going around and then that plastic part in the center, um, just to help make it where if you have a battery and you accidentally insert it the wrong way, it's not gonna make contact with that ring. So you need something with at least a slightly raised button top or a flat top that's raised up a little bit like these. And these make contact just fine. They fit down in there and they make contact with that ring, which you can kind of see because you can see where they rubbed against that ring right there. But you do have reverse polarity protection. That's how that works. It basically prevents it from making contact in there. Uh, it is always possible, you know, if you have something stuck in there, a little piece of metal or something like that, it can make contact. You definitely want to make sure you insert the batteries correctly in this and every other light, just in case. Even if they have the reverse polarity protection built in, you want to make sure that you put them in the right way because it can get very hot very, very quickly. You can burn the inside of the light. We actually have one in the store where somebody inserted them incorrectly and uh, melted the inside of the light. So I'll, maybe I'll show that in a future video if I can dig it up. So make sure the batteries are inserted the correct, correct way. It takes three, so we're gonna put three 18650s in there. That's another thing to note. That's a big way that they cut down on the size is a lot of the other manufacturers that are making the high lumen compact lights they're using four 18650s. So these are using three. So you're not going to get the same run times, but you do get a, a pretty compact light. This thing is nice to hold. It actually slides in a pocket pretty easily. You're not going to throw it in skinny jeans, but in a jacket pocket or anything like that, or in your pack or in your vehicle. It's really reasonable. And you can see in the hand, it's a really, really compact light, especially considering you can get 8,000 lumens out of one of these. There's your lanyard attachment point down there if you want to attach a lanyard on there. It is kind of nice. I actually always use a lanyard for my kids, or I try to most of the time because they like to drop the lights. I don't know if they like to, but they definitely do it quite a bit. So it's nice to protect the light. If it accidentally slips out of your hand or if you need to use both of your hands, you can just drop the light and then the lanyard will keep it on your wrist without you having to find a place to set it down or stick it in your pocket or wherever. It is pretty convenient. So if you, if you like lanyards, that's where you attach the lanyard right there. So turn it around a little bit more. They actually have uh, engraving on there that shows you the orientation of the batteries. 
just in case you're wondering. But like with most lights that we sell, the orientation is the positive side towards the head. And you can see the two different versions are physically identical. The only difference is going to be in the LEDs themselves. So you've got the uh, the Nichias and the high CRI, and then you got the XPG3, XPG2, XPG3s in the cool white. So the XPG3s are going to give you that higher output. Nichia 219 is going to give you the better tint, but it is going to give you a lower output. And you'll be able to see a lot better when we go outside them compared directly against each other. But you can see the lights are physically the same. They just have the different LEDs underneath those optics. All right, so let's, let's use one and let's talk about the interface on here. I'm gonna be honest, when I first started using this light, when I first turned it on and put some batteries in there, I was like, man, I'm not really a fan of this interface. But then I started using it and I started going on walks with my kids and I started you know, letting the dog out at night and going for walks with him. And I actually like the interface a lot. Once you get used to it, it works really well. You can get to all the modes quickly and easily. So they did a good job on designing the interface. So it's all controlled by this side switch here. So tap the side switch and what it's gonna do is it's gonna go into the moonlight mode that you have set. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Keep on tapping, it'll cycle through your lower outputs. And that's kind of cool. You can see that when it goes all the way up and you start going back down, it actually goes down instead of cycling through um, instead of cycling through like a lot of the lights will do. So a lot of the lights, when you go all the way up to the max output and you keep on going, it's going to go right back down to low. But this one starts going back down, which is kind of a cool way to have it set up. And you saw it just a second ago, but press and hold for about a half second and it'll turn the light off. There's another mode group. So that's the lower mode group. There's another mode group. And the way to get into that is from on or off, double click. And that'll give you the max output. That's, that's getting my hand pretty hot. I'm going to move my hand away and then tap and you'll cycle through your other ones in that mode group where you've got the strobe, you've got SOS, you've got a beacon flashing mode, and then you have a battery indicator. And what the battery indicator does is just shows you the battery life. And I'm gonna pull out the user manual again because I can't remember exactly what it is. So blue is more than 75% capacity on the batteries, purple is gonna be 50%, and then red is less than 20%. And again, as with all lights, keep in mind that if it's, probably, if it's in purple or red, it's probably not gonna get into your turbo, your max output. Or if it does get in there, it won't stay in there for very long just because the batteries don't have enough capacity and don't have enough voltage to power that. So there's the battery indicator. And then if you tap it, it'll turn the light on into moonlight or do the double click or whatever you wanna do. And then press and hold to turn it back off. You can also get into a memorized output. So it's always gonna to default to that moonlight when you tap it for the first time. But if we wanna turn it up a little bit and do the press and hold and turn it off, the way to get it back into that is do a press and hold again. So do a press and hold and it'll go back into your memorized output, basically whatever it was in when you turned it off. And then you got the double click to get into the max output. And again, you can do that while it's on as well. So if you double click while it's on, it'll go into your other mode group with the max output and then the flashing modes. And then you also have a way to program your output on that moonlight. So I like super, super low moonlights. I've had a lot of people comment in videos because I always say the moonlight is what I use the most on my EDC lights. And that is 100% the truth. I use moonlight all the time. You know, when I'm going down to my office and I don't want to disturb my kids or I'm looking in on them at night or I want to see something that's right in front of me or I want to look inside my pack when I'm camping or inside my vehicle, the moonlight is enough to see what's right in front of you. It doesn't blow out your night vision. It doesn't disturb other people and you get amazing battery life. So I use moonlight all the time and I have this set to super, super low. But if you want it to be higher, you can set it to be higher, which is really, really cool. All right, so the way to get into what they call the engineering mode is to turn the light on, press and hold until that side switch illuminates and then quick, click quickly four times. And then you are in the engineering mode. And you can see when I'm tapping that switch, it's cycling between some very, very close uh, outputs. So they're all very close to each other and you can select what exactly you want it to be. So it can be between 0.1 to 30 lumens. So we're gonna put it a little bit above the lowest and then you press and hold to turn the light off and then your moonlight is set to whatever you want it to be. So that is a pretty neat feature. So if you don't like the super low 0.1 lumens, you don't have to have it on that. If you don't want the 30 lumens, 
You don't have to have it on that. You can set it anywhere in between. You can see you've got a lot of discrete, discrete levels in there that you can set it to be exactly what you want. So that's a really neat feature that uh, you don't see programmability on very many lights, especially not to that level. And I haven't shown very many lights that have that ability. So it's really neat to see that feature in there, especially considering the price. The price on this light is really reasonable. You're at 130 bucks at full retail. Of course, you got to get the batteries because it doesn't come with the batteries or a charger or anything like that. But still, it's a really reasonable price considering the quality and the output and everything that you get with these lights. And you add in the programmability and all the other features. Very, very attractive light. Uh, in terms of everything together. It's just got a lot of stuff going for it. And, uh, you know, the looks of it, I also find pretty attractive. It's got some cool aesthetics to it, really neat look to it. They did a lot of nice things on this light. I honestly can't really find a fault. Yeah, the interface could be refined a little bit, but like I said, once you get used to it, I think the interface actually works really, really well. And I like the programmability. I like the adjustability and how you can quickly get to what you need to get to. So you can instantly get to that moonlight, whatever you have it set to, you can instantly get to the max output and you can instantly get to your memorized output as well. So the interface actually works well once you get used to it for sure. So let's talk about the interface again real quick. So you tap the switch to turn it on into the moonlight, keep on tapping, it'll cycle through your outputs, double click and it'll get straight into your other mode group where you've got the strobe and the other flashing modes. Do a press and hold and it'll turn the light off. And I showed you how to get into the engineering mode. And then you can do the double click from on or off to get into the max output. And then the press and hold to get into your memorized output. All right, so that's the interface and features and accessories and everything else you get with the Maker MK34. We're going to go ahead and take both versions outside just so you can see how they compare against each other. You can see the tint. And it'll help you decide if you're a cool white person or a high CRI person, because I have the camera settings as close to what my eyes see as possible. So let's go ahead and go do that. All right, we're outside with the two Maker MK34 versions. Got the big 40 mag light that I always use as a control. Let's go ahead and try out the mag light. Tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. All right, let's start off with the cool white MK34. We're gonna turn it on and we're just gonna cycle through the different outputs just so you can see what they look like. You've seen me talk about beams like this in some recent videos and some similar lights. And uh, I absolutely love lights like this. You just put out a ton of lumens and put them out over a really wide area. Just light up everything in front of you without the focused hot spot. You don't get that super bright part in the center. I really like that. I like to light up everything in front of me versus things at a very far distance. Even better are lights that can do both. There aren't many like that on the market, but uh, still you can see you get solid distance out of this compact light or relatively compact considering how many lumens you got coming out of this thing and how many LEDs are in it for that matter. But really nice beam. I'll kind of shine it off to the side while I'm going through the different outputs just so you can see how wide that spill is and how wide that beam is. You got sort of a hot spot in the center, but the transition from the hot spot to the spill is very gradual. So it's just a whole lot of light throughout the entire beam. Really nice beam on this. Very impressive considering the size, how compact this light is. It's really, really small uh, as you saw in the video. Again, especially considering the output. And then there is your turbo. There's your max output. A lot of lumens coming out of this thing. Let's zoom in down there just so you can see how well it's lit up. We'll cycle through, oops, sorry neighbors. It's like three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> we'll cycle through the lower outputs while it's zoomed in. Okay, so that is the cool white version. All right, let's try out the high CRI version. We're gonna start off with a turbo on this one. We'll shine it around. So you've got lower output, a little bit lower output, but man, the tint on it is awesome. Great colors on it. We'll cycle through the lower outputs just so you can see what those look like. I love the way it makes all the colors look like out there. Pretty close to daylight. It's really nice colors on that Nichia 219 high CRI. So th this would definitely be the version for me personally. I think the colors look great. But if you want the highest output, then Cool White is definitely the way to go. Totally a personal preference. We overwhelmingly sell more Cool White in everything where we have Cool White and Neutral White or Cool White and High CRI or all three. Cool White is always, always the most popular, with the exception being some headlamps. Headlamps are about 50-50 on some of the headlamps, but for flashlights, definitely Cool White is more popular. But 
I like that tint. Look at that tint. It's so nice. Okay, let's do them one after the other. So we'll do high CRI, or sorry, the cool white. And then there's your high CRI, just so you can see them quickly, what the beams look like and the colors and everything. Okay, let's go ahead and take these out to a longer distance. And we'll show you what these lights can do at a longer distance. Let me actually zoom in on turbo down there. Can't remember if I did that. There you go. All right, let's try these out at a longer distance. All right, we've got some more space to try out those MK34s. Let's go ahead and do the cool white again first. Boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. One is at 50 yards, one is 100 yards. Those white signs are at about 65 yards. And the tree line beyond is about 130 yards. We'll just cycle through the different outputs. And then while we're zoomed in, let's go ahead and show you that max. Show you all those lumens coming out of it, how well it's lit up, and how much is lit up at once. Just a big old wall of light <laughs> coming out of this thing. I love the beam on it. I like the size. Interface is pretty solid. They did a really good job on these. I'm pretty impressed. Maker is a relatively new brand for us. We've only had them as of the time of this video, maybe about a month, a couple months. And I've been impressed with what they've done so far. They've got some neat lights at very reasonable prices. Shine it back and forth a little bit. Just cycle through different outputs. I keep on getting told that I do this too quickly. So I'm gonna do the uh, cycling through a little bit slower, but you can always pause if you want to see the different outputs. Okay, so that is the cool white. Let's go ahead and try out the high CRI. Show you how it does with some more space. And there again is your max output. Ah, I love that tent so much. So let's shine it around while it's zoomed in. And then we'll go ahead and show you the lower outputs as well. Just so you can see what those look like at the distance. Let's zoom back out, cycle through. And then let's do the turbo, shine it around a little bit. So obviously everything lit up very, very well. Big old wall of light. Even when I shine it off to the side, it shined off over there. And you can see, you know, just it reflecting off the trees and just the spill, how well uh, and how wide the beam lights up things, even over there when it's shining over there. So I've asked for this in some recent videos and I'm gonna keep on asking because I'd like to get a nice collection of stories. But if you use a flashlight on a daily basis, let's, let's go down the, the hill of death real quick. Really need to clean the leaves off probably <laughs> before I go down it with my camera. But uh, anyway, if you use your light on a daily basis, if you carry your light on a daily basis, if you use it for your job, you EDC it and you use it all the time, let me know what you use it for in the comments. If you have any stories of where you've been really happy to have a light on you, let me know and I'd really like to make a video and just share people's stories. Let other people know how our customers have used their lights, how they find them useful, and just to help other people get an idea of how you can use a light. Because I've kind of talked about some examples in some recent videos and I'm gonna continue to do that because I, uh, I talk about these lights and I kind of talk about lighting up white areas at once but I realize I do kind of a bad job of practical examples. You know, how would you use this on a daily basis? And it could be as something as simple as, I've been taking this light out uh, when I go for walks with my kids at night. You know, they love going on walks and coming down here and looking for crawdads and toads and critters and stuff like that. And I've been using this light and some other lights recently, and I find it really useful. I like to be able to light up just a wide area at once. I like the variability in the output. I like to be able to light up what's right in front of me without blinding me. But then when I need it, I wanna see what's going on. Just everything out there, I've got that max blast. And this is a great light for that. So even if you use your light for walking your dog or taking the trash out once a week or going to your car in the morning, we've had police officers tell us how they've been chasing a suspect and they're really glad they had a nice light on them at night. Any kind of stories you have, let me know. I take it for granted that uh, not everybody carries a light. <laughs> a lot of people come to us and ask, hey, I wanna carry a nice light, but I don't really know if I need to. Why would I carry that on a daily basis? Or why would I keep one in my vehicle? How often would I use that? So 
I'd really like to be able to tell some stories about how other people have done that. I have honestly had a light on me basically since birth, and that's not really much of an exaggeration. Pretty much my entire life, at least as long as I was wearing pants with pockets, I had some sort of light in my pocket. You know, Maglite Solitaire back in the day, and uh, definitely up upgraded after that. But even something as simple as that, I found useful a lot of times. So I've pretty much always had a light on me, and I take it for granted that other people don't. So share your stories with me, share them in the comments, and we'll make some videos in the future where we tell some of those stories. So if you're looking for a concentrated beam and you're only trying to light up a very small area, this is a terrible light for that. But if you're trying to light up just everything in front of you, big old monster wall of lumens, then these are awesome, awesome lights for that. I'm very impressed with this company. They've done a good job on everything that we've seen so far. So let's do them uh, at a distance, one after the other. So there's your cool white. There's your high CRI. So you can see them really quickly. Okay, so there you go. That is the Maker MK34. Nice, compact, really high lumen light. I love the Nichia 219 version, but if you want the max output, the XPG2 Cool White is definitely the way to go. If you like them, you can buy them from me at goinggear.com. I like them a lot and I definitely recommend these. I, uh, you've probably been hearing that a lot from me in recent videos. And the reason is we bring in a lot of lights. We stock a lot of different lights. So I tend to do the ones that I really like first. <laughs> so you've been hearing that from me a lot in recent videos. And if you're wondering, that's why. I've been doing the ones that I personally like and I personally recommend. And this is one of those for sure. So if you have any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments, any of my guys at goinggear.com. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching.